Good evening, everyone. Hey, and thank you, Chanel, for helping uh, get us all set up here for our Michaels Community Classroom this evening. I'm Chris Williams, and here in the studio with me this evening is Andy Jones my partner in crime in our Let's Paint with Plaid group. And Andy's gonna be our helpful moderator this evening. So you're welcome to, in the chat, go ahead and say hello to Andy, as well as feel free to ask any questions throughout tonight's class. We've got a lot to cover in a very short time period, but before we turn it over to tonight's class, I wanna give you a quick sneak peek for our next Michaels class that we're gonna offer. And this will be on Tuesday, April the 18th, there's no place like home. And we're going to have some really fun, very, very simple, easy. Every skill level is available to uh, come join us for this class. This will be on Tuesday, the 18th of April. Again, it'll be at 730 in the evening, Eastern Standard Time just like tonight, but just in a couple of weeks. So feel free to join me. There's no place like home. I'll be sharing that fun class with everyone and every skill level. But tonight we're gonna go ahead and paint our floral basket. So I think it's best if we just go ahead and go overhead, Chanel, and we can go ahead and get started with our class this evening. I saw in the comments this morning or just a few moments ago that someone said they did not see the pattern. Well, the pattern was available right with the supply list on michaels.com uh, in the classes and events section. And the pattern will also be linked with this recording once it's saved and uploaded on Michael's YouTube channel. So if you don't have the pattern tonight, feel free to uh, do your best and paint along or wait until you can get that pattern and download it. The pattern is a, a two sheet um, piece here that can, uh, you can see the pattern is split in half or it's tiled. And it will take two eight and a half by sheets of paper, eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper to uh, print it out. What I did ahead of time was I just put the pattern together and made myself a nice little tracing. And then I used uh, typical uh, transfer paper that artists use, which is gray, graphite and an artist stylus. I placed the graphite graphite side down onto my canvas surface. This is an eight by 10 that we're painting with tonight. And then I just used the stylus to trace over all of the main pattern lines. Once the main pattern lines were transferred, I'll hold this up, so, up to the camera so you can see, I did transfer just the basic lines. Notice on that daisy there, I didn't even draw out every single petal. I just did almost like a sun or a starburst there. So I just put down just the basics of my pattern. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and bring this over so that maybe you can see both of these while we paint through the class tonight. Let's go ahead and get started putting some paints out on onto our palette. The colors and the paints that I'm working with tonight is the Folk Art Matte Acrylics. These are all colors that are available in the Let's Paint Live kit. And what the color I just put out is, is cinnamon. I'm also gonna add some coffee bean, and I'm going to go ahead and get two more colors out, and that's a bright cherry yellow, and it's called daffodil yellow. And if you uh, are not hearing the colors, or I'm maybe talking a little bit too fast for you, feel free to pull up that chat because Andy is here and he is putting all these colors down in the chat for you as well. The purple I just put out or the lavender that I just put out onto our um, palette here is actually the color called lavender. This is the original formula of folk art acrylics and you will enjoy working with these. They dry to a beautiful matte finish. So tonight, let's go ahead and get some colors down onto our canvas. We'll just start right in with base coating. And I'm gonna do the area here that is our basket. So I'm gonna take um, a pretty good size brush. This is a number 12. You could even go up to a three quarter inch flat if you wanted to. Fill your brush good and full with the first color that we put out onto our palette, which is the cinnamon. And we're just gonna go ahead and paint in the basket shape with cinnamon. So go ahead and feel free to turn your canvas and use the chisel edge of your brush to get a nice, smooth, crisp edge there and paint in. We're probably gonna put two coats on of this color onto our little basket area. So well, let's go ahead and just get that cinnamon flowing. 
If you are painting along with us tonight, I think that's wonderful. You'll have a great time. If you are not painting with us and you just like to watch the first time and perhaps paint along with the replay, do know that this class is being recorded, like Chanel was telling you earlier. And you will find the recording or the replay available in Michael's uh, channel on YouTube. And that can be found usually within 12 to 24 hours after the class. If you are painting along with us, I'd love for you to put it in the chat and let Andy know so that Andy can even let me know. I'd love to know who all is painting along with us this evening. As you are painting in that basket area, there's a little footed area to our basket. Go ahead and paint that in as well. This is all done with the color cinnamon. And this was, like I said, it's gonna to dry to a beautiful matte finish. So let's go ahead and get that on. And then we can also use this um, number 12 flat brush to actually put in some of the handle as well. And so we're just gonna make some little strokes up at the top here to kind of base in some of that handle shape. Some of that handle is gonna be hidden behind some of our flowers, but that's okay. Just go ahead and get some of that handle on there. So right now we have the bowl or the base of our basket, the little footed stand area and the little handle all painted in with our cinnamon. We're, what we're gonna do next with the cinnamon still in our brush, we're gonna pick up just a little bit of that dark brown that's on our palette and that is coffee bean. And with the brush mix of the cinnamon and the coffee bean, I'm gonna base in this large circle as I'm looking at my design, it's gonna be our very open rose here. And I'm just gonna slip slap some of that color on, not worrying about filling in every single little weave of the canvas. I just want this to be kind of a dark undercoat to our, our red brown little rose that we're gonna create. So just kind of slap some of that color on and not a perfect circle, but just a roundabout round shape, okay? All right, now we can go ahead and clean that brush out because we don't wanna carry that color on to the next colors that we're gonna paste in that we're gonna focus our attention now on this larger flower that is mostly yellow and lavender. <clears throat> and that's going to be here on the left-hand side. If you look at this, there's actually like double layers of kind of like semi-circles, if you will, petals. And the inner layer is going to be a yellow petal. The outer layer is going to be a lavender petal. So let's go ahead and start with our inner layer. And I'm going to fill that number 12 flat brush with our bright sunny yellow here. And this is actually daffodil yellow. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of use that brush with some pressure to kind of fill in that whole little uh, petal shape if you can. You're kind of making a, like a little swerve or curve to let that brush kind of just with pressure kind of fill up that little space. So you're gonna go ahead and paint in, um, there's five, five petals. And we just want them to be nice and bright and yellow right now. Feel free to turn your canvas if you are painting along with me tonight so that you can always get a nice good shape of that petal. And I'm on my fifth one. Now I might be painting a little bit fast for you. If you can keep up with me, that is absolutely wonderful. If you can't, that's wonderful too. Just feel free to work at your pace tonight. And like I said, know that this is being recorded and you'll be able to follow along uh, with the recording later. We have a lot to cover in an hour. So I do tend to need to paint fast and teach fast tonight. The outer petals here are just going to be based in with our purple that's on, on our palette, and that is lavender. We're also going to use that lavender to, to do the, if you look at it, it's almost kind of looks like a donut in the center here. There is a ring that's touching the yellow, and then there's a small, tiny little ring on the inside. This larger donut shape here is going to be lavender, as well as these outer petals are going to be lavender. So I'm going to go ahead and use that same number 12 flat brush and I'm going to stroke into that puddle filling both sides of that flat brush with my lavender and we're going to do the same kind of thing if you look at these strokes they almost look like a seed 
a C stroke. So I'm gonna start here between two of my yellow petals with the chisel edge of the brush in there. And then I'm going to create like a C. And then I'm gonna, so I'm starting on my chisel. When I pull out, I'm gonna put a little bit more pressure on that stroke so it gets a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna end back up on the chisel of that brush. So this is a nice way to use your brush to its best ability to be able to fill in those strokes and you're not sitting there paint, 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 painting. You're not having to do lots of baby individual little strokes. You're being able to fill in that whole petal just with the pressure of your brush. And you'll notice too, I'm holding my brush back on its handle. I'm not right up next to the ferrule. The longer I, or the further away I hold it, the more freedom I have, the easier it is to paint all these strokes in. Chris, can you hold yeah. the canvas up to the camera for a close up, please? Let me turn it right side up and I'll be glad to. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for that, Andy. Let me know if there's anything else anybody needs to see closer or any other right questions. Now. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So again, I'm just holding that brush back on its handle. I'm starting up on what we call the chisel edge of the brush. I'm applying some pressure. And then I'm ending back with light pressure back up on the chisel edge. And look how easy it is to paint this petal. And if this one covers over some of my handle, that's all right. So now I have my cinnamon done on the basket and the basket handle. I mixed a little bit of my brown with the cinnamon to kind of base in our red. We now have our yellow petals based in. We have our purple petals based in with the lavender. And now we have this donut shape here in the middle. So let's go ahead and fill that in. You can still use your 12 brush. If it's more comfortable for you to jump down to a little bit smaller flat brush, feel free to do so. I'm just following along the edge of that little center shape or that donut shape close to the yellow. I'm using that as my guide to kind of paint in this lavender center of our flower. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush because I wanna base in a few more areas of some color before we start adding some details. This uh, petal here or this flower here has one, two, three leaves. So that's one up here, two here, and then a third one down here I added after we do the, our, our blue flower here. So let's just get these three leaves based in first. So we're gonna add a couple more colors to our palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze out a little bit of thicket. That's our darker green. We also have a really bright, vibrant green. And that is called lime green. We can go ahead and get a little bit of that out as well. Okay. So let's go ahead with that same number 12 flat brush and let's load our brush up with the darker green. And that again is thicket. So I'm filling both sides of that flat brush with thicket. And we're just going to, these are not leaves that have points to them. These are leaves that have a rounded edge. So it's almost kind of doing that little C stroke a little bit more just to kind of get some color going in these three leaves. So I'm basically almost repeating that same stroke I just did using light pressure on the brush and that chisel edge. And I'm kind of making like a little swoopy leaf. Is everyone doing okay, Andy? They seem to be doing pretty good. Okay. Did many people tell you, Andy, whether they're painting with us tonight? Uh, we had a couple of people who said they were, and I have looked and we've got a screen of people who have their cameras on who are painting, and then lots and lots and lots of people who may or may not be painting along, we just don't know. Yes, well, Andy and I often talk that sometimes painting along in a class that has to be taught so quickly like this, sometimes it's hard and it's a lot easier to follow along 
um, on your own, perhaps after the class has been taught using the recording as your, your, your pass or your go-to. All right, so I've got these three leaves in here. You'll notice there are two more leaves over here. And so these are a little bit larger. They have a point to them. And I'm gonna hold this up so you can see close. You'll, when you look at the two leaves next to the rose and the daisy, there is like a, a green leaf area. And then there's like another band or border of colors just outside of that. So what I'm talking about now is the inner leaf area. So in, and when I transferred my pattern, you can see I transferred both lines, the inner leaf, as well as that band on the outer section of the leaf. So what I wanna do right now is I wanna go ahead and paint that inner leaf and do allow a little bit of a point to come through if you want to. It's a rounded point, if you will. This is still done with my number 12 flat brush and it's still with the darker green, which is thicket. These are um, kind of rounded, but they're, they're more with a point. So the left side is definitely curved at the tip. This side comes to a little bit more of a point. And right now I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm going to dry it really well. We're, right now, we're not going to worry about all of these little fern type strokes. We're also not going to worry about this trailing blue flower right here. We're just gonna concern ourselves with the inside of the basket and the design. We have one more bigger flower here, and that is just below our lavender and yellow flower. And that one is pretty much just white for now. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of white to our palette and just paint in a very rough rounded shape. It's not a perfect round circle. And so I'm gonna use that same number 12 flat brush, loading it really nice and full with our wicker white. And just like we did this one, kind of rough in a little rounded shape using our white on the brush. It's not exact, just kind of roughing in a little bit of a, a round circle there. And now I'm gonna pinch that brush and kind of get rid of that white that I have in my brush. And I'm gonna start putting some more color now on our basket that we started with. Mine is dry here under the lights in the studio. And I'm working, of course, all of us are working, of course, with acrylics. So they might be drying pretty quickly for you, which is great at this point in time. So fill that brush. I didn't take the time to clean the white out. I just wiped the white out onto my paper towel. Go ahead and fill it with our base color, our local color, which is that cinnamon. And I'm going to just kind of stroke another coat of that on here really quickly. And then we're gonna begin shading that as well. So we're gonna use that number 12 flat brush, kind of working around that flower, working around the lavender flower petal. and just kind of adding that color. And I am, you'll notice I'm stroking my brush in several different directions because I do wanna have a little bit of texture on this basket. And don't, again, don't forget about the footed area. So you'll want to put some of that cinnamon color down on the table bay or the foot maybe. And then that grounding foot at the bottom. Now, while my brush is still wet with some of this cinnamon, I'm going to refill with some cinnamon. And now I'm going to take my brush and I am going to stroke the side of the brush right up next to our dark brown color. And that is our coffee bean. So I'm actually adding coffee bean as a side load on this flat brush just by stroking the corner of my cinnamon loaded brush up into the coffee bean. If you don't have coffee bean, burnt umber is a great color you can use too. And what we're going to do is we're gonna start putting the side of the brush that has the dark brown in it, close to the left side of our basket and underneath all of our flowers. And so I'm just going to simply kind of pat that color on. And you'll notice I'm just doing short little choppy strokes 
and I'm patting down to kind of create the bottom or the base of our basket here. So just let that wet on wet kind of, it's kind of uh, tacky right now and that's perfect. We want it to be kind of sticky and tacky as it's beginning to set up and dry on us and you're just patting that color on and you'll see there might be some, oops, I'm sorry, I went off camera. There might be some stroke work or some marks from your brush strokes. That's okay we, and it's okay to have a nice little texture there. I'm gonna come underneath my red rose here. Again, just kind of patting some of that color on. We're not worrying about making a, a real defined fine art piece here. This is more like a little piece of whimsy. This is something that any skill level can do. And we're just patting on a little bit of that shading color and allowing some of that brush strokes to show at the bottom because we do want, like I said before, we do want some of that texture to show. On that little tiny like stem here of the foot, I'm gonna be on the left side, kind of making that line and then just kind of pat as I go across. So I want it darker here. Let me hold this up and I'll show you closer. I want it darker here on the left side. And as I stroke, stroke, stroke of going across to the right, I'm gonna have less dark color as I go all the way to the right. So it's gonna be just shaded across the bottom on that little bit of like a leg. And then on the very bottom here of the foot, we're gonna be shading our brush. Again, just short little choppy strokes here on the left-hand side and going almost to no paint on the right-hand side. Everyone doing okay? If you don't have cinnamon, Luke, uh, yellow ochre is a possibility for you. Cinnamon is a good basic color a lot of artists work with, and that's one reason why we put that in the um, Let's Paint Live kit that we're working from tonight. It's just a good basic color to have on hand. While my basket is still slightly tacky and kind of getting ready to set up, I squeezed the brown shaded color out onto my paper towel here. And now I still have a brush that has paint in it, but very, very little paint in it. I'm going to reload my brush again with my local color or my base color, which again is my cinnamon. And this time I'm gonna add some highlights to my little basket. And so I'm gonna stroke that puddle of wicker white using the corner of that number 12 flat brush. So I'm gonna have a flat brush that has cinnamon and some wicker white in it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a highlighted area on the right side of our basket here. So we're gonna um, either work for our way up or work our way down the basket and also on the footed area here too. So with the white side of the brush on towards the outside of our basket and the cinnamon towards the inside of the basket, again, short little choppy strokes, we're just kind of blending some of that color in to kind of create a highlight on what is going to be the light side of our basket, which is the right side. Just short little choppy strokes, kind of blend that in. You can see it's much lighter now on this side. And then let's do the same thing here on that little bit of a uh, stem. And then also on the base or the foot. Very little, not a lot of detail, but just very little. And then we're gonna wipe our brush clean. We can also go ahead and try and do the handle real quick. And with the handle, you can use your number 12 flat brush. If it's easier for you to go smaller with another brush, that's okay too. I loaded my brush with the cinnamon and the dark brown. Again, that's our coffee bean. And on each one of these little, uh, little squirrels of like a rope type handle, at the bottom of that handle, I'm putting some brown, oops, let me go this way. I'm putting some brown on. So if you think of this as like almost like a V here at the bottom, I'm at the bottom point of that V and I'm patting that color up along on the right-hand side. 
And now I'm gonna do the same thing on each of these little sections of our handle. Think about that V and then go right up along. If you're holding it like a V, go right along that edge. Up on the right hand side. And if you also wanna think about it this way, it's all to the inside of the handle. All right. So I'll show you mine up close. I've got my cinnamon and my dark brown on that handle. I'm gonna wipe that dark out, reload my brush with cinnamon, and I'm going to create the highlight. Again, just like using the wicker white on the corner of the brush. And now we're gonna think about each of these sections in reverse. So let's hold it upside down and think about it in the reverse. So if we're upside down, if you wanna still think about that V on each of those sections, but we're going to the outside. So we're gonna highlight at the top there and then come around on the outside of each of these little sections. Short little choppy patty motions. This is not a fancy basket, not a lot of bunch of detail. It's just very, very simply, simply done. Any questions at this point, Andy? Not right now, Chris. Everybody's, okay. I'm sure, frantically painting right along with you. I'm, I know. We're kind of full speed ahead tonight, aren't we? Well, you got a lot of painting to do and not much time. Just about an hour. <laughs> I know. I certainly don't want to put any pressure on you, but we're fast I approaching know. the halfway point. <laughs> All right. We're going to move now, <clears throat> putting some white on our brush. And I'm gonna squeeze another little bit of color out on my palette. And that is our, our uh, brilliant ultramarine. If you don't have that, cobalt blue will work. We're gonna concentrate on this little, little rose type flower down here. So I've got mostly white in my brush. And now I'm going to side load with that blue. I'm gonna have a brush that's about half white and half blue. And I'm gonna turn my work upside down so that the base of the flower is now pointing towards me. So I'm gonna really bring that blue in. Again, just short choppy patty strokes, bring that blue in. And again, I'm not doing a full basic exact circle. I'm just kind of outlining that shape a little bit and giving myself a little bit of a rough edge. And this flower can either go underneath your purple one, or if you wanna bring it over on top, that's okay too. Just kind of get the shape in and then kind of fill in with some short little choppy strokes. And then what I'm going to do is just give myself a little bit of a center with the darker blue. And this is all we're gonna do to this flower for now. Let's move on to these three leaves that are right here. And let's pick up our the same number brush, same brush, number 12 flat, same dark green, which was our thicket. And I am going to give one more coat of thicket on these rounded tip leaves that are over here by our yellow and purple flower. One more coat of the dark green. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce another color to kind of shade these. And this is our navy blue. Navy blue is gonna be a darker blue than the first blue that you have out on your palette. If you don't have navy blue, another good color sometimes to use is Prussian blue. I have my brush loaded with the thicket that we started out with. And then I just side loaded into that navy blue to give me a little bit of a deep blue on my brush. And with that navy blue, I'm now going to deepen each of these leaves. So as I'm holding the leaves that the base of the leaf is facing me, we're gonna do the left side of the leaf with the blue and then across the bottom with the blue. So you can see now that there's a lot more blue in that thicket leaf and it deepened that leaf quite a bit. 
So we're gonna do the same thing with these two leaves right here and deepening the base. And same thing with this one here. And then we're gonna let these kind of dry. All right, so now we'll move on to the two leaves that are on this side. I cleaned that out of my brush because I don't want the blue in the brush this time. And so now I have still my number 12 flat brush, still loading it with the thicket, kind of recovering the thicket one more time on the two leaves that are out by our red rose. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to pick up some of our dark brown on the brush. So uh, that's Chris, our can you hold that up. Can you hold that up for a close up? Thank you. That's just another second coat of thicket right now on these two leaves. This side over here has got the navy blue in with the thicket. These two leaves here are going to have our coffee bean in with our thicket. And so when I look at these two leaves here, I'm going to shade the base of the leaf with our brown and our green, and then pat up along the bottom side of that leaf. So if you're looking at your leaf with the base towards you, it'll be the right side of the leaf. So we're going across the bottom of the leaf with our brown side of the brush and then we're going up to the top and that's the bottom of the leaf with the coffee bean to the right side of the leaf. Chris, when you get that done, can you hold it up? Cause it's a little hard to see what the colors are looking like. All right, thank you. Uh-huh. That looks good. It was just hard to see the brown on that dark green. Yes. While I have this brush still loaded with our thicket and our dark brown, the coffee bean, I'm now going to fill in that outer rim that's on to the outside of each of these leaves. And I'm gonna do that just by using the chisel edge of my brush and follow along, just kind of giving me a dark green brown on the outside of these leaves. One side is gonna be accented in a minute with our red to kind of pick up on the accents of our red rose there. But for now, we're just gonna go with the chisel edge and the dark ground, brown green here around this leaf that we just kind of added. All right, now I'm going to wipe that out of my brush. And let's go real quickly back to our purple flower here. I'm gonna load my cleaned number 12 flat brush with our local color of that lavender. And I'm going to side load a little bit of that lavender and you can use either your brighter blue or your darker blue, it doesn't matter. Um, your brighter blue will make a brighter flower. The navy blue will obviously make a darker flower. And on this, purple petal, I'm going to keep the blue part of my brush right up next to the yellow of the petal. So we're just kind of putting a little bit of a shading line right behind where that yellow is. So again, I'm holding my brush handle back. I'm using the chisel edge of the brush, applying a little bit of pressure in the middle of that stroke. And I am just putting a little bit of a shadow right up next to our yellow. That is my lavender. And like I said, you can use either blue. I am using the um, Brilliant Ultramarine right now, but you could also do the navy blue if you wanted it a little bit darker. And I am just very quickly using that chisel edge of the brush, applying pressure in the middle of the stroke and then pulling back up. I'm going to hold my brush so that the blue side is here in the very center of my flower where we kind of left that donut ring open. We're gonna close it up with our blue and turn your brush so that you're kind of working that circle around. 
So you've got purple or lavender in the brush. It's falling onto the lavender areas. You now have the blue working towards the center and you're kind of covering up that opening that we had there. The decorative strokes that I have on the yellow are done with our lavender. But just before we do that, I am going to load my flat brush. Again, I'm still working with my number 12. And I did clean to rinse out that lavender and blue, loading it with the local color of my daffodil yellow. And I'm going to highlight with a little bit of white on the outside tip of each of those petals. So I now have a brush that has our daffodil yellow and our white in it. Still holding my brush back, still working with the chisel edge there, keeping the white to the outside petal of each of these strokes. I'm just putting ever so lightly a little highlight on the edge or the tip of these yellow petals. So the blue has kind of given us a little bit of shading. Now this white on the edge of our yellow petal is making it really kind of pop and giving you a little bit extra color there. There's only five petals. And so it doesn't take long to kind of go around here if you let your brush do the work for you. This is my number 12. I started loading it first with the base color of the leaf, I'm sorry, of the petal, which is our daffodil yellow. And then I added the white on the edge. So with that double loaded brush, we could just kind of went around the outside edges of our yellow petals. And now I'm gonna switch my brush and I'm gonna go down to a number one liner. And I am going to, with a little bit of water on that brush, take some water over to where my lavender puddle is and I'm gonna thin down a little bit of that paint. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And what I'm going to do with this liner brush filled with the thinned lavender paint on each of these yellow petals in the very center here, we have three little strokes. These are done by starting out here towards the edge and stroking towards this donut ring or this center. So I start here in the very center and I do a tall one and then two short ones on either side. And when I do those, I first touch down, apply a little bit of pressure, and then I just do a really quick pull and lift. So I'll do one here for you. And I'm just gonna start here in this center, touch, pull, lift, touch, pull, lift, touch, pull, lift, very fast. Don't worry about them being exact. This is not an exact flower. This is a little folk art flower here. And so we're gonna do that on every single yellow petal. Again, there's five of them. So you're gonna do three strokes on every single, I always start in the center one, make the tall one, then make two short little ones on either side. See how quickly they're coming together? And your paint will flow right off of your paintbrush for you because you've taken a moment to put a little bit of water in it and to kind of thin it down a little bit. If you were using the Folk Art Acrylics in its natural, rich, creamy consistency, it might be a little bit harder to do this kind of a stroke. So let that paint thin down a little bit and then just make those simple little strokes all the way around. We're gonna come back and highlight with white, but let's get moving on to the rest of our, our um, design here. I'm going to go back to my number 12 flat brush, same brush we've been using a lot. And I'm going to side load with our lightest green, which is our lime green. And I'm gonna come back to these leaves here. And we darkened, as we were holding the leaf with the base towards us, we darkened the left side of the leaf. Well, now we're gonna highlight the opposite side. So I am bringing that lime green, just a little bit of a highlight on the opposite side of the shadowed part of the leaf. So I'm just bringing some lime green in and bringing it in towards around the tip, kind of making a little C stroke at the top of the tip there. All right, 
Now, while we still have the lime green in our brush, we need to highlight the two leaves that are over here by our rose. Chris, and can you hold, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you hold that uh, sample that you're working on up so that we can see where you just highlighted? Sure, sure. This is why I, I'll bring my other one up too, but while I have this up, I'll show you. I highlighted here on the, this is our shadow part. This is where we're gonna come and highlight on the opposite side. And we're kind of making like a C on each of these strokes here for these three. And this is what I was just getting ready to start to tell you was we shadowed on the bottom part of the leaf. Now we're gonna highlight on the top part of the leaf. And this is that inner leaf section. So what I did here on the my one I'm working on, I started up here on this edge and I kind of made like a little C stroke on each of these leaves. Same thing on this one here. So the lime green was on my side of the brush that was going towards the outside edge of each of the leaves. So for these two leaves over here, we're gonna highlight the top of the leaf so from the tip, I'm just kind of touching down and pulling some of that highlight color onto the top part of that leaf. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this leaf. And now I'm gonna clean my brush with my liner brush. I'm gonna go back and pick up my navy blue. I have just a little bit of water in this brush, not much, but I'm gonna thin down a little bit of navy blue with my number one liner. And on our three leaves that are on the left-hand side, when I hold this up, I want you to see that there's just one center little stem line between each of those three leaves in the middle of the leaf. That's done with our navy blue. And I'm starting here at the base. And you may not even see much of it because we've got such nice dark shading here, but we're gonna start at the base and we're just gonna pull up in the center. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna start at the base and pull up to the center. And we'll do that on all three of your leaves just to kind of create a little vein in there for you. With this same navy blue, we can come over to this leaf now and we can put the veins in this leaf too. Now, this is not one center little um, vein. We did pull a center like stick, if you will, out and then pull little veins off of the main stem or the main vein. So again, that's done with your liner brush. Make sure your paint is a little fluid, a little water mixed in with it. And what you're gonna do is start in the middle of the leaf and then just pull out and then pull little stems out from it. These are just simply little straight sticks looking. They're vain, but they just paint them like they're straight sticks. They're just lines. Okay. All right, let's real quickly get our little daisy in and then we're gonna work on our background. So let's start with that um, number 12 flat brush. I'm gonna load it with our yellow to begin with and let's just kind of dot in using the corner of my brush, dot in the center of our flower. It's not real exact. I just kind of tapped yellow on and dotted that in the center there just to kind of tell us where the center of the daisy is going to be. And I'm going to switch and use a, a round brush that's bigger than my liner. This is a number six round brush. And I'm going to make sure my brush is clean, it is. I'm going to do our daisy with both our brighter blue, not the navy blue, but the ultramarine blue and our white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, um, I might use two brushes just to save some time. Let me do it that way. I'm going to, to save some time, I'm gonna load my number one liner brush with my blue and that is the ultramarine blue. And I'll save my number six round brush for the white. 
So what I'm going to do for each of my strokes, and you'll notice, remember I showed you, I did not paint or transfer the full petal shape. I'm going to start about halfway the distance of my petal and just touch down and pull to the center, touch down and pull to the center, touch down and pull to the center. So I've got like three little marks there. You wanna be careful not to do too many at one time because we do want to work wet on wet. So while this blue here is still wet, I'm gonna load my round brush. This is a number six round that I have with my white. And I'm just now going to begin that stroke a little bit further out beyond that blue. I'm gonna to touch, apply some pressure and pull. And you'll notice that, look how pretty that is. I see some of the blue shading coming through from that blue little part of the stroke that I just started with. So let's pull that in and then clean my brush, reload with some fresh white and I'll do the same thing. So that's how this daisy is done. And so if you can work with two brushes at a time, it does kind of help you go a little bit faster and you're just touching down with that blue about halfway the distance of the length of that petal and then coming back and going beyond that with the white, touch down, get some fresh white, pull that through. If you don't clean your brush in between and pick up more fresh white, you might end up with a darker uh, stroke of a blue petal. Let me pick up my brown brush with my blue again and just do a couple more. And this daisy can either be painted on top of uh, your red rose, or it can go with a few petals underneath. Okay, so I'm gonna show you mine up close and you can see there's just a little bit of the blue shading through, showing through. And now we'll come back with that number 12 flat brush one more time, and we'll re-tap in our center with more of that yellow. So you can tap over on top of some of those white petals if they came a little bit too far into the center. All right, I'm going to real quick now, go ahead and get a little bit of black on our, our background around our flowers. Um, and then I'm going to come back and do some detailing with some more flowers, the red rose in the center. So I'm going to take a larger flat brush right now and very, very quickly, I'm going to bring that black up right next to my design and just quickly, quickly, quickly pat that on. Now, some of you might be asking, why did we not base, base coat this black first and then begin with our pattern? Well, we didn't because of the time's sake that we have to work with tonight. And uh, some of you have even asked ahead of time, can you do this on, if you are not painting with me tonight, maybe you might think about this, can you use a black canvas? Of course you can use a black canvas. Um, one thing when you trace and transfer design on a black canvas, I will tell you that the black uh, does not show or the black background kind of hinders a gray graphite transfer. You might need to use the white chalk method or you might need to use the white chalk transfer design. And also when you're working with a black background, you may even have to put more additional base coats on. For now, I'm not gonna go all the way out to the edges because I do wanna still be able to hang on to my canvas. So I'm just bringing this black background really quickly now around my shape of my basket and some of these flowers, because as you can probably tell from the design, there are a few flowers, uh, blue ones on the, let's see, that would be my right hand part of the design that we're gonna paint on top of the black. We also have some fern like greenery that we need, can do as fill in on top of the black. So I'm just using the chisel edge of my flat brush. And again, I did switch to a larger flat brush. You can use a three quarter inch flat brush to kind of help get this area filled in pretty quickly. The black I'm working with is licorice. We also make a black color that's called pure black. That would work as well if you don't have the licorice.
this black is what really kind of makes these colors begin to pop and you really get a beautiful, um, just a beautiful design here with like kind of like opposites attracting. And I'm almost around all the way here on the side, going up real carefully around this handle. <laughs> Any questions, Andy, as we going on? No, someone was just worrying about, well, now we've got more than one person worrying about whether you're going to teach the rows. And oh, I told yes. you to hang on, you're going to teach them how to do it. Yes. This rose is one of the simplest roses that we can learn how to do. I promise. Let me get a little bit of black here down inside our basket handle. We're gonna teach the red rose and then we're gonna teach the details on this yellow and lavender flower. And there's still some details on the leaves. And then we have our little ferny leaves to do yet too. So we got a little bit yet to do, so hang with me. One more little bit here after this. I think I'm gonna let some of that go because I wanna wait and see what my ferns are gonna look like on the outside there. Okay, so I've got enough of my black in that we can go ahead and move on to the next sections here. And of course, you'll take your black all the way out to the outside edge. If you're gonna frame it, you don't need to worry about the outside edge. If you're not gonna frame it, you can paint black all the way around the um, exterior of your canvas. I'm gonna clean that black brush out and just kind of set it aside. All right, let's get going on since you're so eager about this red rose, let's get going on that. That is all done with a round brush. And you can use either your number six round brush or you can use uh, a little bit larger brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit larger one. I'm gonna start with my number 10. This rose is done um, more home or harvest-like. It's uh, got a lot of brown in it. It has a lot of red in it. Let me bring this up so you can see it up close. It's not a bright, bright rose. It's got a lot of dark muted colors in this rose. And that's kind of why we undercoated this area more in browns. What we're gonna do with this is gonna use the round brush, like I said, and we're gonna start here in the center of our rows. So if you want your center here, dead center in your circle or round shape, fine. If you want your center more up here, that's fine. If you want your rows looking down, that's okay too. So think about the direction that you want your rows to be because you're gonna start in your center, wherever you want your center. If you want it up here, if you want it down here, wherever you want it, see like this center here, is looking, making this rose look down. Perhaps you want that one looking up. So then it might be a little bit higher than more than just the center of the flower. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Think about where you want that center. And we're gonna start in the center and we're gonna use uh, a color combination. We might even just mix some of this up to kind of help keep it easy for you. Take some of your apple red off to the side and with some coffee bean, that's our brown. We're just gonna mix a little bit of those two colors together. That is apple red and coffee bean. A lot of times I don't necessarily mix. A lot of times I just brush mix as I go, but it might help you to have a little puddle of the colors separate and off to the side. This is not really well mixed and that's okay because those colors are all gonna kind of blend here in the center of our rose. I'm gonna fill my round brush with this red brown mixture 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of the letter C. We all know what a C looks like. A C looks like that. Well, we're going to do that much, much smaller, much, much simpler. And we're just going to start with a little C stroke. I'm going to make my center right here. And I'm going to show you. Can you see there's just tiny a little C in the middle? Now I'm going to keep working with the with that direction of the C, but I'm going to reverse it. So I'm going to bring another little C around in that direction. So we're always going to have the letter C, but I'm going to move my canvas and I'm going to keep making my C's from the center going all the way around. And I'm going to kind of let some of these overlap or begin and end in different areas. I want you all to see, Can you, I added three more little C strokes. I'm now going to, once I get that center built, I'm now gonna start working a little bit bigger and using a little bit more pressure. So I'm not gonna have every single stroke start in the same way. So this one might start here in the middle of this last stroke using just the tip of the brush I now might apply a little bit more pressure, but I'm still doing a letter C. So that's this big fat stroke down here. I started in the middle of this last stroke here, and then I let that C go around. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, maybe going in this direction. I'll start. Again, it's still a C, and I just keep adding Cs with a little bit more and more pressure every single time I do that. And I also start introducing a little bit lighter colors or brighter colors. Each stroke can be slightly overlapping, but not exactly. And as I'm building my strokes, I'm getting a little bit further out from that center. I'm also introducing a uh, difference of colors. I'm starting and stopping at different points within my rows, still using this round brush. It's all a bunch of letter C's. Can you see now how it's just building one letter C after another after another? And some are bigger than others. Some might even have a little bit of a wave. It's okay to introduce a little wave there. You could even pick up a little bit of your yellow and make more like an orange on some of your strokes. Each bit of this rose is very lightly done, very little pressure on the brush. And I just keep filling and I can go outside, outside on top of my basket. I can go around on a top cup uh, on top of a couple of the leaves. If you want to grow your rose a little bit bigger. Let me bring this up so you can see closely. I'm not done with mine, but I just wanted you to see some of the strokes. You can even come back in here. Maybe you want to make change the color of some of your inner ones. I do like to keep these very simple ones that we started with darker here in the center. There's another couple more strokes. Be careful not to fill it completely. You still want to see some of your color behind. Um, I think I'm going to go over a couple of these uh, daisy petals at the top and just make my rose grow a little bit bigger this way. There we go. And that's basically all there is to this style rose. Now, I will tell you on my sample here, you know, these outer bands on these two leaves right here are rose leaves. This top one, let me bring it up so you can see close. Can you see the red that's on that top outer band of the two rose leaves? That is done with this dirty brush. Whether you have the brown red or whether you have the bright red, I just kind of started at the tip of this 
and I stroked down into the, the leaf here. That's all I did. I added that red here on the outside of those leaves. And this is all we're doing with the red. So I'm gonna wipe the red out of my brush. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use just some of my coffee bean that I have left over. And that's gonna be strictly on the bottom part of the band of the leaf. So I just added the brown here on the bottom of these two leaves right there. And then what I'm going to do is we're gonna start putting some greenery in and we've got these beautiful little blue flowers here at the middle, at the bottom, I should say. So I'm going to just give myself some stem work right now real quick. And so I'm going to take my uh, lime green with a little bit of my thicket and just kind of mix those two. I'm using my liner brush and I've got a little bit of moisture or water in the brush, kind of thinning that paint down a little bit. Think about where you want to, or use your pattern if you want to. I have a little ferny stroke here, one on top of the basket. I have one coming up this way and one over here and one underneath our blue flowers there. So depending upon where you wanna put your ferns and how many ferns you might want, you can just go ahead and use that liner brush with your lime green, I went back and I got a little bit more lime green so you can see it on camera. And I'm, what I want you to do now is just kind of for placement only, kind of give yourself a guideline of where you want to put these little fern strokes. And yeah, maybe one down here. So that was more or less just for placement. I did these strokes all with a small flat brush. And when you look at each of these ferns, there's a, right, a light side and then there's a dark side. If you look at this one up here, the, you can see the light side is here on the right side of this stem and the darker leaves are to the left side. So my darker leaves are simply going to be this dark, green mixture, which is our thicket plus a little bit of our um, lime green. And I'm just going to touch pull in towards that center stem. So I'm just gonna touch, and this is a smaller flat brush. I have a number four here, you could use the number six too. And there's two little leaves. I just touched, pulled towards that center vein and let those kind of curve they tend to be a little bit larger in size, closer to the base of the stem. They might get a little bit more delicate and smaller in size as they go out towards the edge or the tip of that stem. And while you're doing the dark one, go ahead and do all your ones dark that way. So think of one side of your stem as dark, one side is light. And on this one down here, I'm actually putting it on top of that blue flower. Go ahead and layer on top of some of your design. And you could actually do several little strokes all at one time. So this again is our lime green and our thicket. And we're doing the dark petals of our little ferns first. I say petals, but they're really kind of like leaves. And then one more on this one over here. I'm just putting in some of the dark. And now I'm gonna wipe that dark green mixture out of my brush and I'm going to come over here and you can go as light as you want. You can use just the lime green or you can take the lime green and even mix a little bit of your white with it and make a brighter lime green. And that will be your lighter value leaf that goes on the other half of each of these little fern strokes. So again, it's just kind of touch and pulling. It's almost kind of like dabbing. I'm dabbing that brush, but I'm using less pressure as I come out to the tip. And I'm showing you right now, if you want to look at your cameras, there's the top one. And look how pretty that is when there's a real distinct color difference between the dark side of your little fern and the light side of your fern, especially going against this black. 
Look how pretty that is. So do all your light ones. Again, this is either just lime green or lime green and white, and mine is lime green and white. Just dabbing and getting smaller, so that means I'm using less pressure. And on mine, I chose to let the very tip leaf, the very tallest one or the one furthest out on the end to be my light color on every single one of those. And that was more just at the very end. And I pulled just ever so slightly with less pressure in towards the center. Now let's work on these two stalks of blue flowers here and then we'll almost be done. And the two stalks of the flowers, let's go ahead and give ourselves a vein. So I'm just gonna, for the sake of um, being able to see it against our dark background here, uh, I say vein, it's kind of like a stem. Let's just pull out one and then let's pull down one this way. So I've got two strokes that I just pulled out two veins here. Can you see them? For, and that will give us our base for these blue flowers. And I'm going to switch to a flat brush. And the flat brush I'm using here is a number eight flat brush. And the blue that is my blue of my flowers here is our brighter of the two blues. That was brilliant ultramarine. And we're gonna also use some wicker white. So I am going to begin with the brilliant ultramarine in my number eight flat brush. I'm filling both sides of the brush with a little bit of that blue. And then what I'm going to do, let me hold this up so I can explain our flower to you. When we start our flower, we're gonna start with a larger flower up here at the base. And obviously you can see they get smaller as they trail out towards the tip here. This flower up here, the very first one is gonna have five petals to it. As we go out from that, the next two are gonna have four petals. Then they're gonna have three petals, two petals, and it goes on until we only have one petal all the way at the top. So it's gonna be less petals per flower to make them smaller in size as we trail out towards the tip. So if you, I'm showing you if you can see up here, these are very free form. It's just a quick little stroke, a quick little pull of the brush. We have our brilliant ultramarine in our flat brush. Now we're gonna come and we're gonna just stroke into our white. Even if your white's a little dirty like mine is, that's perfect. Don't worry about it. So now we're gonna start up here at the top and my green might still be wet and I might pull some green into this flower and that would be fine with me too. I'm just gonna to touch down and pull, touch down, pull, touch down, pull and make five little petals. And I might need to pick up a little bit more color or paint in between. Okay, so there's my first little one. It's kind of big, but there's five petals there. I started out with my Brilliant Ultramarine and I have a dirty brush load of some white to it. Now, as I move out from this, I'm gonna concentrate on just one of these stems first. So I'm gonna hold the furthest part um, of the tip away from me. I'm gonna hold the base of the flower towards me. So then my next little cluster here is just gonna be four petals. So I'm just using my tip of my brush and I've got four petals here. Then I'm gonna pick up a little bit more blue, a little bit more white, and then I'm gonna go just to three petals. Let me hold that up so you can see. Then I'm gonna to go to two petals. And then I might, depending upon the length, if I had it longer, I might do another row of two petals, but now I'm just gonna go one, one, one. And that's the very tip of my blue little flowers. And I'm gonna repeat that on this side, but we've already got the five petal going on. So we're just gonna do the four. So this is again, our blue and a little bit of white. One, two, three, four, then one, two, three, then one, two then one, one. How simple is that? And yet it's so sweet and so delicate. 
And it's such a fun little flower. And when you look at mine here, no two are ever gonna look exactly the same because you are brush blending, you're brush mixing, you're not worrying about the size or the shape or the pressure with every single little flower. It's very, very simply, simply done. The last thing I did to enhance this little blue trailing flower is to add the center to each of these little ones. And you can see it's just a little bit of daffodil yellow and a dot. And I used my liner brush to paint those dots. A lot of you like dotting tools and your stylus. You can do that. But this little dot here just dabbed in what might be like the center of each of these flowers, irregularly shaped dabs of dots of yellow for the center, just really makes it ever so pretty. Can you see that? We can. So there, Okay, let's move real quickly back to this flower. We have a little detail to do on her. And I'm going to use my liner brush still. I'm going to uh, bring some water here to my palette, bring some of my clean white over here. We're gonna do some white line work and I want that paint to be very fluid. So you noticed I added more water and I'm really thoroughly mixing it with my brush here. I do not want the rich creamy consistency. I want it very fluid with my liner brush. And then I'm going to blot that liner brush because I want to make sure that the brush is loaded with just the fluid white and not a real drippy watery mess of white. What I'm gonna do on this flower here, well, I want you all to look, can you see that there is a very fine white line around the outside of our purple petals? That's what we're gonna concentrate on right now. So line work, everyone grunts and groans, but I'm telling you, when you learn how to do your line work, this is what really makes a design kind of pop. I think it's what's what makes it really, really pretty. Learn how to use your liner brush, thin fluid consistency paint, hold your brush straight up and down so that the point or the handle end of the brush is pointing to the ceiling. The tips of your bristles are what's touching your surface. I'm gonna hold mine sideways this way so you can see my tips are just right here. And I'm just gonna let that brush tip flow right along the outside edge of that lavender. And look how pretty that is. When you look at that versus the one next to it, look how nicely that trimmed out that little petal. So this is what I want you to do for each of your next uh, five or, well, I guess four more now after you finish your first one. Just put that little bit of a line work around the outside of that petal. Very fluid paint, liner brush good and full, using just very little pressure. The tip of the brush is what's for doing all the work for you. And I'm gonna do one more here. One more thing I did on white trim here, in between where each of those strokes come in, between two lavender strokes and where those two come in, can you see the little dot, dot, dot? Let me hold that up. Those are three little dots of white. And what I did was I used my liner brush and I started the dots right out here at the edge and I worked towards the center. Three small white dots between each of the areas where the petals meet. Again, just another little trim, another little extra. And these are all done with white and your liner brush. And while that brush is still out, go ahead and add a little bit of white to it. Now, I didn't even clean the white out. We're just gonna give this blue flower here center a few little yellow dots, just a few little details inside that blue kind of rose-like flower. And that was our white brush that I did not clean out. And I just picked up a little bit of the daffodil yellow and made some little yellow dots inside that blue flower. And our daisy center needs a little bit more trim. So what we're gonna do there is we're going to, with that yellow in the brush, and I'm not cleaning it out, we're gonna pick up a little bit of our red and we're gonna create some red dots 
along the bottom of our daisy center. Can you see here, it's, if you think of the face of a clock from maybe about nine o'clock all the way down to six o'clock and back up or maybe around to five o'clock. These are just a little dots along the bottom of our daisy center. These are dots that are um, almost kind of dab them on, if you will, because you don't want them all in one row. You kind of want them inside the center as well as outside the center. I'm gonna clean the red out of my brush. I'm gonna pick up some of my yellow again. This is again, my daffodil yellow. I'm gonna add some daffodil dimensional dots here in the center, and then I'm gonna pick up some white and do some white dots inside the center of our daisy too. And that would be more towards the uh, 12 o'clock to two o'clock areas where I put in the highlights of the white. And that my friends is all we're gonna do to our design. Obviously you'll come back and you'll finish with your black and finish painting all the way out to the outside edges and go ahead and trim your sides here as well. If you have any, um, if you're gonna put it in a frame, then maybe you don't need to paint your outside edges, but this is all we're gonna do to kind of finish up our design. Andy, do we have any questions from anybody or did I miss a step that maybe somebody wants me to repeat? You uh, did not miss any steps and we are getting lots of thank yous uh, for your design and for your teaching tonight. So I think they're pretty happy with what they have been able to accomplish. It's a lot in an hour, I know. <laughs> but I have faith in everybody here that you can do this and do a really nice job with it. Um, Chanel, can we go face on again one more time? I just want to thank everyone for tuning in this evening. And I also want to remind you, if you're not yet a member of our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group, Andy Jones and myself are the two kiddos here that um, lead that group. We welcome you to join our Facebook group if you're not a member. It's a very warm and welcoming Learn to Paint community, and we have lots of free classes there. And if you take a picture of your project, whether you painted with me tonight or if you're going to paint along with the recording, I can't wait to see your work. So please take a picture, share it in our group, and use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge or make it with Michael's or Michael's Community Classroom. Was that it, Chanel? Did I say them all? <laughs> and you can also hashtag Plaid Crafts. So join our group, take a picture of your work, post it there. We would love to see it. Andy and I love being cheerleaders for each and every one of you. And don't forget to mark your calendars for April the 18th. It's another Tuesday night uh, paint night with Michaels that it's not next week, but the following week at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time in the evening. And I will be teaching uh, There's No Place Like Home. So unless there's any other questions, Andy? Don't think so. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. I hope you enjoy painting uh, basket floral with us or floral basket. And until next time, come on everybody, let's paint.